The challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you husky. <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. George Hobart was a young mining engineer who lived with his wife in a small cabin on the outskirts of Dawson City. One evening in early winter, he was coming home from work at the Big B Mine on Bonanza Creek. As he approached his cabin, a slender, sharp-featured man suddenly stepped forward out of the shadowy darkness. Good evening, Hobart. Well, Dave Kyle. What are you doing here? I, uh, I wanted to have a little talk with you. I know you got home from the mine about this time. Well, what's the idea of skulking there in the shadows that way? Figured it might be better if I caught you outside before I, you went into your cabin. You might not want your wife to hear what I have to say. What are you talking about? Well, it's like this, Hobart. Or, uh, should I say Hayward? Hayward? Yeah, that's right. Up here in the Yukon, you've been calling yourself George Hobart. But your name used to be George Hayward back in Colorado. How did... <laughs> now, do you savvy why I wanted to talk to you privately? Or does your wife know all about your past? What do you know about my past? I know that you're wanted by the law back in Colorado for robbing the Gold Star Mine where you used to work. I never committed that robbery. Sure, sure. I know you claim to be innocent. But the police want you just the same. If they ever catch up with you, it's a cinch you'll do at least a ten-year stretch behind bars. How did you find all this out? <laughs> what difference does that make? Point is, I did find it out. And it's going to be mighty unpleasant for you if I should decide to pass the information along to the Mounties. Meaning what? Meaning that I'm here to talk business with you. In other words, you're trying to blackmail me. <laughs> Blackmail's a nasty word, Hobart. Let's say that I'm willing to make a deal with you. What kind of a deal? As the manager of the Big B Mine, you're bound to know the combination of the mine off a safe. So it ought to be easy for you to make off with a few thousand bucks. Why, you do... Simmer down, Hobart. I'm offering you a chance to stay out of prison. Well, how about it? I... I don't know what to say. I'll have to have time to think it over. All right. I'll give you 24 hours to make up your mind. And if you're smart, you'll play along with me and do like I say. Otherwise, I'll be forced to tell the Mounties just who you really are. Rosalind Hobart was just setting the table as her husband entered the cabin. Hello, darling. You're just in time for supper. George, what's the matter? You look as though you've just seen a ghost. I... I'm in trouble, honey. What do you mean? It's a long story, should have told you the truth long ago, before we ever got married. What on earth are you talking about? In the first place, my name isn't George Hobart. What? It's George Hayward. Hayward? But why have you... Just before the Klondike rush, I was working as an engineer at the Gold Star Mine back in Colorado. One night there was a robbery, an inside job. It looked as though I'd staged the whole thing. But I didn't. I swear I didn't but do you it. You don't need to convince me, darling. You know I believe you. I'd been framed by a mine guard named Sid Fletcher. I'm sure of that. But I couldn't prove it. So they locked me up. I knew I was sure to be convicted, so I... I broke jail. Is that why you came to the Yukon? Yes. I thought I could hide out up here under an assumed name, start life all over again. Oh, darling, if you'd only told me. I should have. I realize that now. It wasn't fair to you. But I was afraid to tell you the truth. I, I thought you wouldn't want to marry me. Do you think that would have made any difference? But why are you telling me now? Because someone has discovered my real identity. Who is it? 
That gambler, Dave Kyle. He was waiting for me outside the cabin when I came home. I just finished talking to him. Well, is he going to notify the police? He intends to blackmail me. Blackmail you? That's right. He wants me to rob the mine office safe. If I refuse, he says he'll tip off the mines. Oh, George, you're not going to do it. I... Uh, oh, I don't know. But you can't. You're no criminal. The law thinks I am. Well, I won't let you do it. It's insane. Why, if you're caught, your life will be ruined. What do you think will happen if I refuse? Our home will be broken up. I'll have to go to prison for a crime I didn't commit. Maybe not. Not if you go to the Mounties now voluntarily and give yourself up. Oh chance I'd have of anyone believing my story now after the way I broke jail and hid out of here. It's your only chance, George. Oh, don't you realize that you can't buy any real security by doing what Kyle asks? Well, sooner or later, he'll be back with another demand. And if you rob the mine office now, he'll have a double hold on you. I suppose you're right. But think of the alternative. If I turn myself in and get sent back to Colorado to stand trial, they'll throw the book at me. I'll get at least a ten-year sentence. Ten years behind bars. Do you realize what that means? We'll hire private detectives to get evidence against Kyle. Maybe we'll be able to prove your innocence. Anyhow, whatever happens, George, I'll stand by you. All right, honey. Maybe you're right. If that's the way you want it, that's what I'll do. I'll go to the Montes and give myself up. And I'll go with you. Come on, then. No sense putting it off. Get your park and we'll go right now. Dave Kyle had been watching at the window and listening to the conversation. As George and Rosalind left the cabin a few minutes later, they didn't notice the figure that melted hastily back out of sight into the shadows. Kyle waited silent and motionless until they had disappeared from view. Then he hurried back to his cabin. A burly, hard-jawed man was waiting for him. The man was Sid Fletcher. Well, how'd you make out with Hayward? I didn't. The whole deal's a washout, Fletcher. A washout? What are you talking about? You put the screws on him, didn't you? Sure, but it didn't work. He's going to the Mounties and give himself up. What? Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Wait till I tell you what happened. Well, go ahead. Well, when I put the deal up to Hayward, he said he wanted time to think it over. So I said I'd give him 24 hours. Then I pretended to shove off. But after you went to his cabin, I came back and peeked in through the window. There's a place where the logs aren't chinked so well, and if I put my ear up close, I could hear what they were saying. So? As soon as his wife learned what was up, she made a big fuss. She told Haywood his only chance was to go to the Mounties and make a clean breast of it. And by thunder, she finally talked him into it. How soon's he gonna do it? He's already gone. His wife went with him. I saw him leave the cabin. Why, you crazy fool. Why don't you plug him? Plug him? And swing for murder? I'm not that crazy. No, I suppose you'd rather go to prison for blackmail. Those red coats will haul you in so fast it'll make your head swim. Uh, let him. They can't prove anything. Not against you, maybe. But once they get you on the carpet and start grilling you, you're apt to wind up telling them about me. And that's something I can't afford to have happen. Hey, what? What's the idea of pulling that gun? You'll find out quick enough. Oh, no. No, don't shoot me. I, I won't talk. Oh. Oh. Sorry, Kyle. But I just couldn't take any chances. This way, I'm sure you won't talk. <laughs> What's more, the Mounties will never pin your murder on me. They'll think the guy who put that bullet in you was George Hayward. Meanwhile, George and Rosalind were seated in the office at Mounted Police Headquarters. Sergeant Preston and Constable Ross, who was on duty with the sergeant that evening, listened as George told his story. I knew Sid Fletcher had framed me, but I couldn't prove it. I figured I was sure to be convicted, so I broke jail. After I made my getaway, I came up here to the Yukon. I thought I could hide out under an assumed name and make a new life for myself. But it didn't work out that way. The past finally caught up with me in the person of Dave Kyle, and... Well, you know the rest. You did the right thing coming here, Hayward. No blackmailer is ever satisfied with one payment. If you'd given in to Kyle's threats, you'd have been paying off for the rest of your life. I'll still have to pay with ten years of my life. Unless I can prove my innocence. You haven't been convicted yet. It may still be possible to get evidence against Fletcher, even after all this time. Then, too, your action in coming to the police voluntarily will count in your favor. I sure wish I knew how Kyle found out my identity. As a professional gambler, Kyle meets a good many people and picks up a lot of information. They may have heard enough to put two and two together. 
Or his sister Dora may have gotten the information. She's a singer at the Monte Carlo Cafe. Yes, I know. Sergeant, now that George has given himself up, what do you intend to do? First of all, we'll see if we can get enough evidence to press a blackmail charge against Kyle. How will we go about it? Try to get him to repeat the threats he made to you earlier this evening. Do you know where to find him? The two or three cafes where he does most of his gambling. However, we'll try his cabin first. If he's home, you go in and talk to him. Let him think you're alone. Actually, your wife and I will be listening outside the door. We'll see what happens. All right, good enough. In the meantime, Constable, you take over here at the office till I get back. Right, Sergeant. The sergeant went to Dave Kyle's cabin, accompanied by George and Rosalind. There's no light inside. You may have turned in early for a change. Got the knock on the door. All right. The dog seems to think someone's home. Look at him sniffing at the door. What's the matter with him, Sergeant? I don't know. Wait a second, Abby. What are you going to do? Find out why King's acting this way. What's wrong, fella? All right. Steady, boy. I'm going inside and investigate. You two better stay back. Feeling his way through the darkness, the sergeant found a table in the center of the room. There was an oil lamp on it. George and Rosalind waited tensely at the doorway as he struck a match and lit the lamp. George, look there on the floor. Great Scott, it's Kyle. Yes, shot through the head. Mrs. Hayward, will you do me a favor? Yes, of course. Go back to headquarters and report this news to Constable Ross. Tell him to send a police surgeon here immediately. I'd better go with her, Sergeant. I'd rather not have her walking out alone at this time of night. King will go with her. I want you to stay here. Come on, King. Go ahead, boy. What's the idea, Sergeant? Well, one thing, I want to ask you a few questions. Questions? Say, wait a minute. You don't think I had anything to do with the murder, do you? I'm not making any accusations, Haywind. But the fact remains that Kyle tried to blackmail you. I'm afraid I'll have to hold you in custody. At the same time that Sergeant Preston was discovering the dead body of Dave Kyle, Sid Fletcher was knocking on the door of Dora Kyle's dressing room. Dora, who was a singer at the Monte Carlo Cafe, was Dave's sister. Who is it? Sid Fletcher. Come on in. Pete's sake, what's the matter with you? Got bad news, Dora. Plenty bad. You mean Hayward squawked to the Mounties? No, worse than that. He killed your brother. Killed Dave? Oh, no. What happened? Well, I went to Dave's cabin to find out how he made out with Hayward. When I got there, I could see through the window that Hayward was inside talking to Dave. Naturally, I didn't want him to see me, so I hung around outside waiting for him to leave. Here, go on. Well, Hayward was ranting and raving. He looked wild. I figured he was trying to scare Dave into calling off his blackmail threats. But all of a sudden, he pulled out a gun and shot Dave through the head. The dirty murdering rat. Now, wait a minute. That's not all. What do you mean? Well, after he shot Dave, Hayward seemed to go all to pieces. Finally, he pulled himself together and left the camp. I followed him to see what he was up to. And doggone if he didn't go straight to the Mounties. What? The Mounties? Yeah. I reckon he decided to give himself up. I hope he swings. He'll swing all right. Don't worry about that. But what about the blackmail scheme? Do you suppose the Mounties will come around and check up on me to find out if I had anything to do with it? There's no telling they do, just play it dumb. Uh -huh. Tell them you don't know anything about it. And above all, don't say anything about me. Because if you do, they'll figure out right away where Dave got his information. And the first thing you know, we'll both be in the clink. Don't worry, I'll keep my mouth shut. Good. In the meantime, I better lay low, just to be on the safe side. I'll be staying in that cab north of town I rented yesterday. All right. And remember, if the Mounties come around at night to question you... Act plenty surprised and broken up. As far as they know, it'll be the first time you heard of your brother's death. After leaving the police surgeon in charge of the body, Sergeant Preston took George Hayward to headquarters and placed him in temporary custody. Then he escorted Mrs. Hayward back to her home. When he returned to headquarters, the sergeant found Constable Ross seated in the office. How about it, Alex? Has the surgeon completed his examination? Yes, he has, Sergeant. Here's the bullet that killed Dave Kyle. Huh? 38. Does Hayward admit that he owns a gun? No, he claims he doesn't. There was none in his possession, none at his cabin. His wife let me search the place. Huh. He probably got rid of it somewhere after he shot Kyle. <sighs> you seem to be convinced that Hayward's guilty. 
Aren't you, Sergeant? Frankly, no. I think he's telling the truth. Just because he came forward of his own accord and told you how Kyle was trying to blackmail him? That's one reason. Well, if you ask me, that doesn't mean a thing. He could have shot Kyle and then come here with his story just to throw off suspicion to make us believe he's innocent. Well, what you say is possible, Alex. That's why I placed him under arrest, but I'm still not convinced. You'll have to admit it's quite a coincidence if somebody else shot Kyle just on this particular evening when he tried to blackmail Hayward. Perhaps, but what good would it do Hayward to shoot Kyle if he's going to turn right around and give himself up? Why come to the police at all? As long as we knew nothing about the blackmail plot, there's nothing to connect him with Dave Kyle. Well, yeah, yeah, that's true, but... uh... Maybe Kyle had papers or something telling about the blackmail plot, and Hayward figured we were bound to find him. Or maybe Kyle was working with someone else, someone who might give the game away later on. In other words, you think Hayward decided to play it safe and come to us. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You may be right, Alex. Personally, I don't think there's much use building up theories until we have all the facts. What are you going to do? Kyle had a sister, a singer at the Monte Carlo Cafe. I'll have to notify her of her brother's death. And while I'm at it, I think I'll question her and see if she knew anything about the scheme to blackmail Hayward. When Sergeant Preston arrived at the Monte Carlo Cafe, Dora Kyle had just finished singing. Miss Kyle. Oh, good evening, Sergeant Preston. I have something to tell you, Miss Kyle. Is there some place we can talk privately? Why, of course. Come back to my dressing room. All right. Come along, Jane. Won't you sit down? Thanks. I, um, I have some bad news for you. Bad news? What about? Your brother Dave was shot to death tonight at his cabin. Oh, how horrible. I can't believe it. I'm afraid it's true. Do you, do you know who did it? Unfortunately, no. But I thought... You thought what? Well, I, I mean, you Mounties have such a reputation for getting your man. I... I just assumed you'd round up the guilty party immediately. Murder cases aren't quite that simple. We do have a suspect. A young mining engineer named George Hayward, who's been going under the alias of George Hobart. How did you happen to to suspect him? He came to us earlier this evening with a story that your brother was trying to blackmail him. Dave trying to blackmail someone? Why, that's crazy. My brother was no crook. Did your brother ever mention Hayward to you? Never. What does Hayward say he was being blackmailed for? It seems he's wanted by the police in Colorado for a mine robbery. Then he's a crook himself. If he'd commit robbery, he'd probably commit murder, too. He must be guilty. We can't convict him without proof. Do you have any idea where your brother might have obtained information about Hayward's past? No, I have no idea at all. Can you think of anyone else who might have had a motive for killing your brother? No, of course not. Dave was well-liked by everybody. I see. Well, thanks very much. I won't trouble you with any more questions at this time. Come along, King. The following day, Sergeant Preston reported to Inspector Conrad. A man in a blue serge suit was seated in the inspector's office. Sergeant Preston, I'd like to have you meet this gentleman, Detective Sergeant Mulvane of the San Francisco Police. How do you do, Sergeant Mulvane? Sure, and I'm mighty pleased to make your acquaintance. Have a chair, Sergeant. Oh, thank you, sir. Anything new to report on Dave Kyle's murder? Why, nothing at all, sir. I made the rounds of the cafes, but as far as I can learn, no one had any serious grudge against him. I want you to hear what Sergeant Mulvane has to say. May have an important bearing on this case. Sergeant Mulvane, suppose you tell him what you've just been telling me about why you came to the Yukon Territory. We're glad to, Inspector. I came up here looking for a fellow named Sid Fletcher. Sid Fletcher? Well, that's the name of the man Hayward claims framed him for the Gold Star Mine robbery. Yep, none other. And what's more, Hayward was telling the truth. You mean Hayward's been cleared of the robbery, Charles? That's right. About six months ago, the police in Colorado turned up some new evidence which proved that Sid Fletcher had staged the robbery. Fletcher got away, but they sent out a circular on him. That's how we first happened to hear of him. I see. A few weeks later, one of our boys happened to spot Fletcher in a Barbary Coast cafe. When he tried to arrest him, Fletcher pulled a gun and shot him. Was the policeman killed? He died a couple of hours later in the hospital. So now we want Fletcher ourselves on a murder charge. You think he came to the Yukon Territory? Sure, and there's no doubt about it. We know he took passage for Skagway on the steamship Northern Star. When I showed Fletcher's picture at the Mountie Post at White Pass, one of your fellows recognized him. 
He said he thought Fletcher had checked through the pass just a couple of weeks before I did. Oh? Do you have the picture with you? Sure. Uh, here it is. It's on this circular we got from the Colorado police. Thanks. Ever seen him here in Dawson City? No, not that I know of. If Fletcher is here in Dawson, he may be the one who supplied Dave Kyle with the information about Haywood's past. Yes, probably so. For that matter, he may be the one who shot Kyle. What makes you say that, Sergeant? Well, we already know that he'll kill to avoid capture. If he found out that Haywood was going to the police, he may have shot Kyle to save his neck. He was afraid that if Kyle were arrested, it might lead to his own exposure. Yes, sir. Well, you may be right, Sergeant. We're apt to have a hard time proving it. Yeah, don't worry about that. We'll be glad to save you the trouble of hanging him. Our first job is to find him. I have an idea about that, sir. About how to find Fletcher? Yes, sir. When I talked to Kyle's sister last night, she seemed rather nervous. I got the impression she knew more than she was telling him. It's possible that she was in on this blackmail plot. In that case, she may know something about Fletcher. Sergeant Mulvane, may I borrow this circular for the time being? Sure thing, if it'll help you find him. Well, I can't guarantee any results, but I'd like to show this circular to Dora Kyle and see what happens. Go right ahead, Sergeant. The case is in your hands. A short time later, Sergeant Preston knocked on Dora Kyle's dressing room. Come in. You, Sergeant Preston. Yes, there's been a new development in connection with your brother's murder. A new development? Take a look at this picture, please. Sidney Fletcher, wanted for the robbery of the Gold Star Mine. Yes, the robbery of which George Hayward was falsely accused. Undoubtedly, Fletcher framed him. But why are you showing his picture to me? You ever seen or heard of him before? Why, why no, of course not. Incidentally, robbery isn't the only crime that Fletcher's committed. He's also wanted for murder. Murder? Yes, he shot a policeman in San Francisco, and now he's been traced up here to the Yukon Territory. I still don't see what all this has to do with my brother's killing. There's a good chance that Fletcher killed your brother. What's that? I don't understand. If your brother was blackmailing Hayward, he must have gotten his information from Fletcher. In other words, they were probably working together on the blackmail scheme. But in that case, why would he want to kill Dave? Because Hayward went to the police. And that meant your brother was sure to be taken in for questioning. And if your brother talked, Fletcher might wind up on the gallows. I see. You're sure that your brother never mentioned Fletcher's name? No, not that I can recall. Well, if you remember anything later on, let me know. Yes. Yes, I'll do that, Sergeant. As soon as the sergeant had gone, Dora Kyle opened the drawer of her dressing table and pulled out a small pearl-handled revolver. She slipped it into the pocket of her pocket. Then she left the cafe and headed for the cabin north of town where Sid Fletcher was hiding out. Dora. Hello, Sid. What's up? Plenty. You told me that Hayward killed my brother. Sure, I saw it with my own eyes. Like I told you, I was watching through the window and... Well, what are you looking so worked up about? Because I just found out a few things. And now I'm not so sure you didn't kill Dave yourself. Me? Kill Dave? Are you crazy? Why would I want to kill him? To save your own neck. What are you talking about? When we first cooked up this blackmail scheme, you admitted that you pulled the mine robbery yourself and framed Haywood for the job. Well, what about it? What you didn't tell us is that you're also wanted for murder. What? You heard me. You shot a cop down in Frisco. How'd you find that out? I found it out from Sergeant Preston of the Mounties. And now, by heavens, you'd better talk fast and convince me you didn't shoot Dave. Because otherwise, I'm going to turn you in. You'll go to prison for blackmail? They'll go easy on me if I help them catch you. Now, look, Dora, you got me all wrong. Don't come any closer, Sid. You see, I wasn't foolish enough to come here without packing a gun. Look, suppose I am wanted for murder. I admit it. Why would that make me want to kill Dave? We were pals. Never mind that pal stuff. You knew Hayward had gone to the Mounties. That meant Dave was sure to be hauled in for questioning. And that would have been risky, because Dave might have talked and brought you into the picture. And you couldn't afford to have that happen, not with a murder rap hanging over your head. Look, Dora, I don't know what I can do to convince you, except maybe this. Yes, don't let go of my wrist. Now take that gun. There, that's better. You dirty, sneaking skunk, then you did kill Dave. Sure, I killed him. You think I wanted to run the risk of getting hauled in myself? Oh, no. Now, thanks. 
So I shut Dave up permanently. Oh, you. Just like I'm going to have to shut you up right now. Stop that gun! Hey, Sergeant Preston! As Dora spoke, Fletcher grabbed her and swung her around in front of him as a shield. Uh, no! He tried to bring his gun to bear on the sergeant, but the terrified girl was struggling too wildly for him to take aim. Oh, With a sudden jerk, she wrenched herself free and knocked Fletcher off balance. Before right. he could recover, the sergeant had closed in on him. I'll take that gun. No, you don't. Stand clear, Dora. This will settle you, Fletcher. <laughs> again and again, Preston sent his right smashing into Fletcher's face while his left hand twisted the crook's wrist. As Fletcher staggered under the blows, his grip on the gun loosened and finally it fell to the floor. <laughs> now then, reach. Back up against that wall. All right, all right. You'd better get your hands up too, Dora. What for? I haven't done anything. I was standing just outside the door and I heard everything you two said. It's true you were planning to turn Fletcher in, but the fact remains that you were involved in this blackmail scheme. You must have followed me here from the cafe. That's right, I did. I suspected that you knew Fletcher's whereabouts, and I felt sure you'd get in touch with him as soon as I showed you that circular. Hey, you little dope. That'll be enough out of you, Fletcher. You're both under arrest in the name of the Crown. When Sergeant Preston arrived back at headquarters with his prisoners, Rosalind Hayward was visiting her husband in the cell where he was being held. Sergeant Preston, is my visiting time up? Not necessarily. I came to tell you folks that we've caught the man who shot Dave Kyle. But, but and I'm in the clear as far as the murder goes. That's right. Oh, well, that's wonderful. I'll say it is. But it would be a lot more wonderful if I didn't have to go back to Colorado and face that robbery charge. I'd like to have you two step out to the front office and take a look at the prisoner before we lock him up. Sure, why not? Who is he? I'll let you see for yourself. All right. Go on in. What? Sid Fletcher. That's right. The man who framed you. If only I could prove that. You won't have to prove it. You've already been cleared. What's that? Six months ago, the Colorado police uncovered new evidence which proves that Fletcher staged the robbery. Oh, oh darling, then you're free. Completely free. Great day, Sergeant. <laughs> I, I feel like dancing and singing. <laughs> well, go ahead and celebrate. This case is closed. In our next adventure, two tough-appearing men are just leaving Joe Parker's general store. As the door closes behind them, one of them speaks. Hey, did you hear what the storekeeper said about Hannibal Jenkins spending some brand-new $20 bills? Yeah. Jenkins must be the guy who found that stolen bank money, all right. Come on. He hasn't gone very far down the trail. We ought to be able to catch up with him. Suppose we do. What then? We'll take him to the cave and work him over till he tells us what he did with all that dough. Then I reckon we'll have to get rid of him. Two desperate bank robbers are looking for $100,000 in vanished loot. And Hannibal Jenkins may be the man who found it. Before Sergeant Preston can clear up the mystery, Hannibal is likely to fall victim to the criminals. And the sergeant may find himself facing death. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure tomorrow. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Saturday and Sunday. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck until tomorrow. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.